Welcome to another tutorial part of the Django channel series and this one we're continuing with our chat application which we've been building with Django and React and in this one we're going to add some functionality to now navigate between the chats that are part of our profile. So if I just log in here then we can see our chats here and if I click on this chat then it navigates me to this URL. Well now we're going to fix this navigation to be actually connecting to that specific WebSocket and loading the messages in that chat. So to follow along, you can just come here to our GitHub account to the Just Chat repository, and you can clone or download this repository to work along in this tutorial. If you clone it, you can just come here to the commits, and this is the latest commit. So if you click on new models and API, then it will show you this page with a commit hash, which you can use to reset the repository back to this point in the code. So you can use the command git reset dash dash hard and then this commit hash and it will take you back to the code at this point which will allow you to follow along with this video and so once you've got everything running and everything open in visual studio code then let's get started So before we get started with changing some of the code, I'm just going to inspect here in the browser and pull up the console so we can just take a look at any errors that come through on the front end. And right away we're seeing the array of our chats that is displaying here in our side panel. And there is something we can actually fix regarding that. So let's come here into the front end. We'll go into the source folder, containers, and then the side panel. And if I just get rid of that, then here when we're pulling the chats in our get request we're only doing this with the component will receive props so I'm just going to add the component did mount method to handle that as well and I'm going to copy this whole command there but I'm just going to change the new props to be this.props.token and this.props.username and then these two as well cool so that'll just fix some rendering problems in case it doesn't load on other URLs and now let's actually go into our chat JS component and we're going to start thinking about how we can connect to different chats by navigating here in our side panel now if we take a look at the connect method on our WebSocket, so let's bring this up here's the connect method and we're defining the path that it needs to connect to as a static path meaning we're not changing the path depending on where we are we've, we've set this as the path to connect to and that is basically the problem that we need to fix so I'm going to pass in an argument here which will be the chat URL and then I'm going to take the chat URL and we'll just change this string here so that I can replace test with the chat URL that we're connecting to so now when we actually call this connect method we need to pass in the chat URL kind of like a chat ID which we will then connect to and for the time being, I'm actually going to comment out this method here, this socket new message where we fetch the messages. And that's also because if we take a look at the chat, we could actually call this here inside the constructor instead of calling it here inside the connect method. We wait for the socket connection to take place. And then here we would call our connect method, which will do so. So we'll say WebSocket instance dot connect. And then we need to pass in something in there. Now what goes inside here is basically the argument here, this one, two, etc. the ID of the chat that we're connecting to. So how do we get this one, two, how do we get that ID? Well, if you come into the roots, you can see all the roots that we have here and we only have this one path which has a parameter which is the chat ID. And that's exactly what you need to grab hold of this value. You need the name of the parameter. So what we do is we grab hold of that by calling this dot props dot match params. So accessing the parameters of the path that we're on right now. And then we call dot chat ID. And that's basically going to grab the value of the chat ID in the path that we are currently in. So if we're at slash one, then this whole value here will be one. And then it's going to call connect of one, which will then pass that as the ID to connect to. And so if we just come here and console log our path, just so we can see if it works, then let's also bring this up. 
and if we come in here we'll refresh this then we see it's connecting to slash one but then it's connecting to slash undefined and so that's something that we're going to want to take care of now as well so if we come back in here let's check our server and you'll see that we're getting some errors in handling the data coming through in the consumer so here we get messages equals message dot last 10 messages and it says message has no attribute last 10 messages so if we just close all of the front end stuff we're going to source chat and let's go to the models first then here we have our chat which has the last 10 messages not the message model so if we open the consumer and just go up to the top then you can see that we are grabbing the message and then calling last 10 messages on the message which is not correct anymore so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create an entirely separate view to handle this so I'm getting rid of it off of the chat model and I'm going to views and here I'm going to get the get object or for for shortcut and I'm also going to import our chat which is coming from our models then here I'm going to define the last 10 messages I'll call it get last 10 messages it's not going to take in self but it's going to take in a chat ID and then we're going to grab the chat based on the ID being passed in so we're going to use get object or 404 of the chat model where the ID equals to the chat ID being passed in and then we're going to return the chat messages where we're ordering them by negative timestamp and getting the first 10 so this is basically our helper method to get the last 10 messages off of any chat so that way we could come into the consumers and if we go to the top here then we can import this so we'll say from dot views import our helper method get last 10 messages and then we'll just say messages equals to get last 10 messages and we're going to need some ID here so if we just comment this out it will actually comment out everything in the fetch messages and I'm just going to say print data as well so we can see what's coming through so if we open up the terminal and scroll down let's refresh the page here and let's go back down here then you can see we're getting a command fetch messages where the username is admin and if you remember where this is taking place this is on our chat so if we just organize these files a bit better here we're calling the fetch messages command which is being passed in the props username and that is calling on the WebSocket. if we come back here fetch messages of username so we passed in admin which is the current username that's logged in but what we want now is we want the chat ID so that we can call this method here to get the last 10 messages based on the ID of the chat that's being connected to so to do that we just come here into our chat and I'm going to add another argument into this method and this is going to be the chat ID which is the same thing as this right here so we just paste that in and now I need to just handle that in our fetch mes messages command which I'll just add as the chat ID as the second parameter so being passed in like that and then I'm just going to space this out a bit more then we need to add our last key in the dictionary or an object rather which is this chat ID being passed into the method so now if we check the console now you can see it says the command is fetch messages username and then chat ID is one and that way we can progress so let's uncomment the messages but we want to pass in the chat ID which is coming through from the data so now if I just say print those messages then let's take a look at this and we'll just refresh the page so if we come back in here now you can see a query set is being printed and those are the messages corresponding to the chat that has an ID of one so let's get rid of the prints now and we'll just uncomment everything here and see if it's working so we'll open up the terminal come back refresh this and we get the username equals admin call we get it undefined and we see line 41 in message to JSON so if we scroll down then here's line 41 and it says the message object has no attribute author so the message to JSON is being called for every message in the query set 
and it's going to pass in the author key as the author on the message but if we check our model we changed it to be called the contact so I'm going to grab that we'll change author to become contact and then we need to say dot user because when we grab the contact that's going to grab this model here and then we grab the user off of that so now we get the username correctly and if we check it again and now we see the messages are actually loading so that indicates that we're doing something right but now let's just fix up some other things here so inside our app.js file here here we were connecting to the websocket instance but not passing in any path to actually connect to so we're going to remove it here because we don't want to just connect to nothing so we can close app now and i'm going to close the views and the models and we're going to go here into the chat and just change up a couple things here as well so i'm going to cut out the state and i'm going to put that outside the constructor so we have the message in the state and I'm going to take everything from here up until the wait for connection. So cut out all of that. And I'm going to create a new method, which will be our initialize chat method. And this is basically just going to do all of that. And then inside the constructor, we'll just call this dot initialize chat like that. And what I actually want to do here is call the component will receive props method. So let's call that here and we'll just say console.log the new props and let's just open up the terminal to keep it there so if we come back here and refresh the page now we can see that it wasn't redirecting to that undefined because we got rid of it on our app component the connect method that is then we can see here is where the props are being changed so we see like match location history that's the props that have changed we see the WebSocket is opened, and then this is coming from the side panel, which we can actually delete that console log. So if we try that again, then here is everything that's being logged out. But now let's go into the admin and create another chat so that we can test the navigating between the chats. So if we just log in with a super user, then let's go to the chats, and I'm going to create another chat, which I'll say the admin is the only participant, and I'll just say save. And actually we'll create another message inside there so let's say add a message there I'll say the person is admin and call this first save and save and now if I refresh this now we can see we're getting two chats here so the first one is the one that we're on currently and then if I click number two then you can see that the props was changing here again and it's that the path is going to the URL slash two because that's the ID of the chat that we're connecting to. But you can see that by navigating between the two, the messages aren't updating. So we need to update the messages when we're navigating between chats, which makes sense. So when we actually update those messages, that's because of the set state method. So it's setting the messages in the state. So let's console log here. And we'll just say setting the state. And if we come back in here, then you can see setting the state there. If I refresh this, there was the first call. If I click on number two, you can see that the state is not being called. And the way that we can fix this is by using our new props method, which is this component will receive props. The reason why we can't do this in the constructor is because the constructor is only called once. And even though the URL is changing, React actually doesn't view as if anything has really changed. So it doesn't re-render the component and recall that constructor. So that's why it's, it's not actually updating the state automatically. So instead, we're just going to initialize the chat again in our will receive props method. So now you can see that the message is loaded here, that first message. So let's just refresh the page and we're on chat two. If I click on one, now you can see that it's loaded the messages for chat one. And now it's actually loading those messages. And so that's pretty cool. Now we can actually connect to different chats and we can see that it's working. The messages for the respective chat are displaying in that chat. And yes, of course, there's no validation going on here at all. As in, we're not checking if the user actually is a participant in the chat we're not checking if they're logged in if they have the permissions to view the chat so yes there's a lot of stuff that's not happening in terms of validating it but 
at least we're getting the data and it's working and we can focus on getting those permissions right in the next few videos and so this is all we wanted to handle in this video so just making sure that we could actually jump between these chats and see the messages for those chats so if you enjoyed this video leave a comment down below let us know what you thought and otherwise thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one